Hey everybody, welcome back to uh, Into the Lair. It's been a second since we've had an Into the Lair, so if I'm a little rusty, you got to bear with me. But uh, I've been trying to think of something really cool to bring you guys. And um, I think because of some of the information that Jay mentioned on his show, uh, Brower on his, Phil on his, um, Joe, uh, Bruce, some of the guys, uh, I think a lot of you guys have, um, you wouldn't call it penis envy, I guess it'd be like audio envy, uh, analog envy, and, and, and some of you guys are starting to feel like you're inadequate because you, you, you don't have a one of everything ever made like Michael has and Jack Joseph Puig. So what I thought I'd do today was um, take a little bit of that um, covetousness away from you and show you not the way but a way to work that will give you uh, the ability to, 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 to formulate your own process of working. Uh, I'm not going to say this replaces anything Michael does because that's just not possible without the equipment and the brain that he has. But what, what you can do is if you put a little bit of effort, a little bit of time into experimenting, I think this this will open up some pathways for you that you can feel comfortable about taking some of his techniques and some of the things we learned from him and applying them within the format of, of uh, a Pro Tool session or a Logic session or um, whatever, whatever your DAW of choice is. So let's jump right in. We went, we went over this a while back and um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to require you to, to do a little homework. Go back and, and go to Michael's website and try to understand not what he's doing necessarily but why he's doing certain things. One of the things I learned from, from Michael is, and I'm paraphrasing, if, if, if I got this wrong, Michael, let me know, but one of the basic foundations of what a lot of guys try to do, Manny, uh, uh, Tony, a lot of the greats, John Marie, uh, Jay, uh, is they don't try to do all the heavy lifting with a compressor at one time. So in other words, if you've got a compressor and it's across a particular source of material, <clears throat> you can and, and, and you can whack off 20 dB, but it's gonna it it, it might be the coolest thing ever, and you might change uh, recording history and get your own little engineering Grammy, but it, maybe not. So one of the concepts that a lot of these guys, if if you're listening to the show like I am, trying to learn every little morsel and every little advantage I can get from these guys. Um, sometimes it's better to do a little bit at the source track, a little bit via an aux, and a little bit via the stereo bus. So that's kind of what I've come up with here. So let's, 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 let's scroll down to my drums. Okay, here, here's here's a kick drum right here, this purple track right here. Uh, this was basically what I was given on this particular session. And um, now we can compress this, which we did. We, we put a little, little 1176 on this. Just kind of controlling it a little bit. And then you can see here I've, I've added a couple of samples to the, uh, well I've added this sample here to, to the kick. This is just uh, our old buddy, Trigger by Steven. And then this, this was given to me by the producer, this is a sub. And then I'm taking a piece of, um, I'm taking a piece of these two guys and I'm sending it to a parallel chain. So you'll see that pop up here in this parallel chain. We're doing a little more of the compression, a little more heavy lifting. Um, I must have had a good idea for that, but I can't remember what it was. <laughs> okay, so now we've got our compression. So now what we, we, we've, we're doing similar things with the snares and all on and on and on. So, so now let's go back up here. 
If I'm making you dizzy with all this moving around. So now we've got we've got four oxes. We've got an ox that's receiving all of our vocals. We've got an ox that's receiving all of our drums, all of our music. And this 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 one changes for me from session to session. This particular session, I wanted to have global control over the amount of effects, just so I could hear it drier, wetter, drier, wetter. But this can be um, this can be anything. You can you can split your live guitars, your rock guitars here, and your synths here. Um, what what what's that, Dave? What did you do with the bass? Well, the bass. I, I, I sometimes put with the drums if I want a certain influence of the compressors uh, to receive from the bass. In this particular song, I put the bass into the um, into the music. Now, if you notice, I'm getting a little dirt right here. Don't anybody panic. It's okay. I'm a professional. Um, I like a little dirt. So that's coming from uh, some of the noise from the plugins, but it's 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 so low, it's okay. I, I actually kind of like it. So, uh, if you have any criticisms about this, address your letters to. <laughs> he'll uh, he'll defend me. Now, at this point in time, everything's coming into into here. Okay. Now, all of these are dumping out to my print track. Now, what I call my print track is a master fader that allows me to have access to the 48-bit architecture. We've gone over this before. There's some good reading on the Pro Tools website about this. Now, I'm, 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 I'm also running all this information into an aux. I don't want to put any plugins on my on my uh, master fader, nor do I want to put them on my print track. I'll monitor something on the print track. This is, I was just checking to see some stuff. But now I've got my L2 here. Let's, let's disregard the L2 for now. So now we're, all our drums are coming into our drum aux right here. Let's bypass the, this L2007. Now with this, I'm knocking off, looks like, uh, if I'm reading this accurately, Will, it looks like 2.75314 dB, which I always like to use um, a ratio of pi when I'm, when I'm doing decimals. We'll go into that later. With, without. Okay, now, the parallel compression on the kick and snare are adding a little tiny bit of compression. The, L2, the L2007 is adding a little bit of compression. Now, all of these are dumping into the stereo bus, and then let's, you can see I'm, 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 I'm doing 3 dB on the L2. Let's see what that adds. Okay, let's see if I can do an AB quick enough. Let me get these. Let me get these guys close enough so I can hit the buttons quick. Okay. With. Oh, I didn't do it fast enough. Okay, let's do it again. Okay, with. Without. It's, it's significant. It's, you know, I'm not going to say that that's night and day, but. When you're competing against a lot of other stuff on the radio, that could be enough to give you an advantage. And I'm not whacking the piss out of it. I mean, this is just gentle kind of stuff. So, okay, without, with. Okay. Now, on the music side, what I'm doing, there's my bass. Let me move these so you can see. And then I'm just using a compressor. I, I, I love the uh, Waves SSL stereo bus compressor. I love, uh, there's any number of compressors that really work well. Here again, I, 
I, I chose the Massey for, for this because I was just, I wanted to see what it would do and, and I got lazy and didn't take it off. I really like it. I'm not sure you'll hear anything here. Well, it's just one guitar. Let me go back. Very subtle, very subtle. It's basically just, think of it as we're trying to make, we're trying to make the L2 have to do a little bit less work. So now, let's bring, let's bring everybody in. I'm not sure if we're gonna hear much but let's try. Let's take all these off real fast. You kind of hear that, can't you, Will? Even at the volume we're listening to now. Very cool. Let me, let me go back. Okay. Okay. When you go back and, and play this back, and you might want to play it back, uh, listen for the sound of the snare changing, listen to the decay on different instruments changing, listen to the rhythm changing, the feel, the vibe. Don't just listen for compression. Train your ear to listen for what the compression is doing because we're not selling compression, we're selling feelings and emotions. If, if, if the compressors that we're using allow you to enhance the feeling and emotion of the song, then, then, then that's what we're selling. We're, 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 we're trying to give our listener three and a half minutes of escape from remembering all the, 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 the horrors of this world. So a little bite at a time, a little bit at the source, we take off a little bit. We, 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 threw, a, we threw a compressor across the kick and the snare. Then we parallel compress those, uh, which we've, we've gone over on another show. If you guys are unclear about parallel compression, let me, let me know and we'll do, we'll do a feature on that. So we, we a take a little bite of, off at the source, the kick and the snare mainly, and the bass on the music track. Then we, 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 we have made a decision to control the influence that the bass has on the compression that we're using on the, on the, on the drums. So, so we can't send everything straight to the stereo bus L2. We, we intercepted it along the way. We split the, the, the bass, the music from the drums. We did a little bit of treatment on the drums, a little bit of separate treatment on the bass. So every time our bass is hitting, our kick drum doesn't go down in volume. The kick drum's controlling its own destiny in the mix. And then we take those four pieces of information, these four guys here, the red ones, we, we dump those into a master fader, which the reason we do that is because the 48-bit the architecture output of that master fader gives us enough headroom to handle all this information without, without clogging down or choking down or, 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 um, or losing headroom. Um, an analog console like the ones we use probably has 28 dB of headroom. Uh, I want you guys to, to do your research and find out what adding this 48-bit master fader, how much extra headroom do I get over the old 24-bit. It's going gonna, it's gonna to freak you out. It's going to be a neat thing for you to discover. And then, of course, after that, we, we let the L2 do what it does best. Instead of brute forcing all this stuff together and being influenced by all these different low-end pieces of information, we can select what the L2 is making its decisions about. I know, I know I'm getting a little flowery with this speech, but um, I'm, I'm trying to, to, to show you the, the, the logic behind this concept because I know, there's, I know there's a thousand of you guys out there way smarter than me, and you can come up with something and show me next week. All right, back to you, Dave.